I tend to be kind of known more for my overdrive and distortion type circuits and kind of more specifically like the amp in the box type stuff. And I did a lot of that type of things back in the, you know, 2010 to 2015 or 16 era. But I wanted to kind of make sort of sort of a test for myself. And I thought it might be a fun little video. First of all, I wanted to grab a, a budget tube amp, a tube amp that I had used many years ago that I loved. It's a Crate V50, 5212 if we want to be technical. And I wanted to use this amp and try to replicate the circuit, but with solid state circuitry. So analog, still analog, but using like pedal circuitry rather than tubes. And I wanted to see if I could get somewhat close to the sound of this tube amp, just simply by creating my own breadboarded circuit. But why this particular Crate amp? Well, years ago, before I had any of these amps behind me, I was looking for a great budget tube amp, and I found this particular, not this very particular amp, this series, this uh, this model of amp, and I used it for gigging quite a bit. It worked great. It was fairly inexpensive. It had digital effects on it, which I didn't really use at the time, but the distortion just worked great for what I was doing at the time. But I did not have this particular amp in my arsenal, so I had to find one. So what I do? I went on Reverb.com and found out that my local Sam Ash store actually had a used one. So for a couple hundred bucks, I went and got one. Okay, so we're back here. I've got the amp. Let's do some breadboarding. All right, so now we have the circuit completely breadboarded. I went through several iterations of different types of circuits to kind of get here. What I ended up landing on is a combination, I think, of FET and some NPN type stuff, uh, bipolar FET, bipolar transistors. But um, I think it's pretty close, fairly close for, you know, an hour and a half or whatever it took me to, to, to try to come up with some sort of circuit. First, we'll play through the amp, then we'll play through this. When plugging into the input of the amp, you always want to make sure your guitar cord is plugged right here into the input, of course, right? But whenever we're using something like this breadboard that is basically acting as a preamp, we need to actually turn this amp around, take this out, and run it into the line in, the or the effects return. This effectively just bypasses this preamp completely and will then allow us just to use our breadboard as a preamp. Okay, so that was the higher gain stuff. I mean, I have the controls pretty much straight up except for the mids. I've got the mids on both pretty much cranked almost all the way up just because it's with, without doing that, it's a little scooped, it's a little bottom heavy, a little top end heavy and no mids. So I kind of just cranked the mids up on it just to you know kind of let it cut through a mix and kind of make it feel like it's not so anemic, I guess you could say. Let's dial the gain back a little bit because there are some differences here. Again, keep in mind, this is just an hour or two of working on this. If I was going to make this into a product, this would probably be a week or two long process. OK, 
Okay, my controls on this. This is my gain. Uh, bass, let's see, bass, treble, and mid. So you can kind of see the mark. I don't know if you can or not, but basically it's almost up all the way. It's about at three o'clock. This is just my volume. So right now gain is cranked. Let's do the same test. Let's go all the way to half. You see a little mark right there that kind of indicates where a knob would be. I just forgot to put one on, but so right there, and I'm straight up and down with comparison to the rest of the pot. So that's gonna be noon. And let's see what it does here. Okay, a few of my thoughts here. Um, you saw me like have this weird look at the end there. That was because I was thinking not near the amount of sustain that I would want out of a circuit if I was trying to emulate that amp. The amp just had more sustain whenever you were on a note. And so that's why I was like, that's weird, okay? I wouldn't like that. In, in, if it was going to be a production type pedal, that couldn't be that way. I wouldn't be happy with that. Uh, what I did like though is with the gain down, I actually like the circuit. I actually like the the uh, solid state circuit a little better. It cleaned up a little bit better. And uh, even when I rolled it down even further, which I didn't do on that amp because it kind of sounded like a turd if I went any uh, any lower, it actually got some really chimey stuff going on. And I thought it was kind of cool. So yeah, I like that part of it. I would keep that part, but sustain wise. We'd have to do something different here. So that's kind of my thoughts on this overall type of circuit here. Just having a little bit of fun, just putting a circuit together, seeing how close I could get in a short amount of time, just to kind of create something fun and interesting for you all. So I hope you liked it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like, what did you think? Did you think that this actual breadboard circuit sounded maybe better, worse, just different altogether? I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, yeah, and even if you like this kind of stuff, check out my other website too, guitarpedalcourse.com. I've got an, a course that I'm in the middle of making right now that's going to kind of teach this kind of stuff, uh, mostly to like a beginner intermediate audience. So if you're already an engineer, you're probably not gonna dig it. But if you're a guitar player and you wanna learn some electronics and learn how to build some of your own stuff, you'll probably love it. Anyways, enough of the selling stuff. Hope you like the video and we'll see you next time with another one. See you later.